Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report. Today we're going to talk about one of the main strikes in the long fist art, no matter which style, is the big backhand motion, right? Because in the last episode of long fist, we talked about the forehand. And the forehand strike and the backhand strike actually link together really naturally, just like stick fighting. Um, the big motions are really good, especially if you don't have a lot of time to train, and therefore you won't get a lot of good short um, shocking inch power. So long fist is really good for people that don't have a lot of time and training and yet they can get a lot of natural big power motion out of it. See you when we get back guys. All right guys, Chris sir, please come on in. So I'm going to use a very basic warm up Wing Chun exercise. That way it's very easy for you to learn. The pass up for example. And Chris, right. Notice how after from here when Chris strikes, when I moved it, I used short chain punches, right? And a lot of times people say there's no power in this, or more importantly, I don't have enough time to train to get enough power from a short distance. So a way few episodes back, I talk about the long fist or long um, striking motion, a very big motion. That way, even if you don't have a lot of time to train, and your speed and power is pretty average, you take an average person, if you teach them long power or big motion, they can naturally get a lot of power out of it. That's the advantage. Of course, there's a risk, and we'll talk about it later. And then on that episode, I'll talk about the forehand swing. Today, I'm going to talk about the backhand swing because it links together really easily because in the form, it actually goes one, and it goes backhand. You see the backhand motion here. That can be used for multiple purposes. So, for example, that's what I did in the last episode, right? What I did was, for straight punches from here, I just swing this way. Now today I want to talk about how that actually links together with the backhand pretty easily. From here, I can just from here, if I miss this or I follow through, then I just bang, I just hit this way. Even a light one, <laughs> you can, because I forgot to bring pads there. And you don't need to use a lot of power because the power is not from the arm and contrary to popular belief, it's not even from the torque. It's just the way you link your body together, which we're going to talk about later. Besides using it for when I miss, you can also be used against multiple punches. If I'm here, right, from here if Chris punches, that actually turns into a block. See, when I back this, it turns into a block naturally and from here, you can hit. Or it can also be used If I miss this, it's Chris back. From here, you can put it into your, sorry, bigger motion. <laughs> because, let's go slow. Not because I'm strong, Chris is actually a lot stronger than me. But when he ducks this, when he leans back here, my hand's here, right? If I loop back, don't let me move you, Chris. I can't move Chris, right? But if I use the natural figure eight swinger motion, then it's quite easy to throw a bigger dude. Thank you. Okay. That means also, when I'm here, if he ducks downwards instead of shorter rope, then again, this also makes it into your ball. It's a lot. So it works in multiple angles. In the event, he blocks this one, it doesn't matter. If he blocks this one, it automatically using it as a springboard. See? And you can continue to back in. Or even back in in the groin. I'll use this leg. It breaks the stance. See? Once you break the guy's stance here, his leg's there. Then you can hit. Or just one more. You can break the stance and trip the leg. If you, if you sink your arm down. When we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Hey guys, so today's concept is actually pretty simple. It's just like the last episode of Long Fist that if you don't have a lot of time to train and you can't get a lot of short explosive power, then it's much easier to use long motion, right? And of course there's a risk. Anytime you use big motion, you're wide open. That's why today I demonstrated with the big back fist. You can also use it against blocks. You can use it against punches. You can use it as a takedown um, because Anytime you do big motion, you want to program it in such a way that when you train it, you're working against different variables like takedowns, kicks, blocks. What if he 
uh, what if he covers? What if he punches you, kicks you, try to take you down, try to draw a weapon and go, and on and on and on. And I didn't go through all of that in this episode, of course, because we only have 10 minutes. But um, that's the idea. That way, if you already pre-train it, when it happens, you don't have to think. Anytime you think in anything you do, not just long fist, it's going to be too late because the other guy is not freezing if he's angry. And if you start thinking about stuff from a technical point of view, you're going to have a lag, right? And then you're not going to be able to react on time. So when you do these basic warm up exercises that we did today, like working off like three punches or something, then it gives you a chance to start pre-programming all the stimuli. And then, then you should be able to handle different things. And the main reason why I demonstrate the low-line throw on the leg, the, taking out the stance, is you want to work on people that's much taller than you. People that's your size, much wider and much taller. That's why sometimes I work on the low-line, right? So when you meet someone that towers over you, you don't freeze. Um, sometimes people only work on stuff that's around their size because they're average size. And then when they meet someone that towers over them, all of a sudden the target availability changes and then their stuff starts to fall apart, right? And this is easily fixed. Anyone can do it. You just got to be patient and start pre-programming stimuli. That's a good way to do it. Um, in terms of power, besides conditioning your hand, which I talked about last episode, so I won't, condi- I won't talk about it today, is when you're doing big motions like this, right? You want to start having a chain where like today I give you an example how the forehand and the backhand to the straight punch actually link together in one continuous chain. This is very important for all motion, but especially important for big motion because by its nature, big motions are very, very slow compared to short motion. So you want to make sure you have a link. That way your body doesn't have to overcome inertia. And the last thing I want to say is a lot of time when people do big swing motion like this, they tend to think of it like the power of torque. And the power does come from the hip. It comes from the lower back muscle and the abs, the waist. So you are torquing, yes. But you should not solely rely on that. You should be able to get power off this swinging motion with just relaxing your shoulder and your scapula, right? I know this is easy to say, but it's it takes progressive detailed training to do all this. Um, learning different stimuli, learning how to get big power without relying on the, the torquing device, right? And then the stance. So you gotta layer this on in the program. So I'm filming a program on long fist. It's gonna be available in full immersion program along with Wing Chun, Hakka Fist, and Xin Yi. If you guys are interested, let me know. It'll be on the website, adamchainkungfu.com. Train hard and stay safe, guys.